Maybe you'll join me in the fight to reform our criminal justice system uh, well, and actually me, do something about the about problem that. of over-sentencing right. blacks and Latinos. Right. I, yes, I, I, I learned I think, that when I was there. Okay. What was sad is that you hadn't actually learned that when you mattered, when you actually were the governor. You, work, you talk about working for the criminal justice reform. There's a lot of people in Chicago, there's a lot of people in Illinois who actually, like, spit up when you say that. Because when you were actually in power and when you were actually governor and you could have helped thousands of people with clemency cases, you blew it off. The governor after you inherited a huge backlog, nearly 3,000 clemency petitions that you failed to review. In fact, you were sued by, by uh, you were sued as governor by Cabrini Green Legal Aid to try and pressure you to actually pay attention to clemency cases instead of extorting people for money and campaign contributions. So it's a little ironic and frankly a little sad and pathetic and hypocritical you talking about you know, commuting, getting a, you get a commutation of a sentence, which is within the president's right, but you ignored a whole hell of a lot of other people who are hoping you might give them clemency when you actually mattered. So actually, well, you know what, question, I'm happy I, to, I'm, there wasn't a yeah. question, it was a statement. I'd be happy to work with people oh, on criminal justice yes. reform, but I wouldn't work with you. Okay, can I answer that yes. statement and question? Okay, I'd like to address that. Look, when you've been put where I was and you have all the time that I was given to think and look back on some of the things you might have done different, that's certainly an area that you talked about that I certainly wish I would have done more on. There's no question about that. Fair that's enough. That's among my biggest regrets. I didn't know how corrupt the criminal justice system was until they did it to me. And that was a wake up call. Having said that, I want to say one thing about me as governor. When the cases came to me, and I was given files about people who were seeking clemency or pardons. I acted appropriately. Actually, no, they sat on your desk, and that's why that you were sued. I mean, that is But the I case. did clemencies, and I did pr pr uh, right. uh, pardons. I didn't, didn't do nearly enough. I, it wasn't a priority. I, I would acknowledge that. I didn't go to the office every day doing that. Instead, I was giving health care to all the children, free public transportation to our seniors and the disabled. Actually, you were, you but were I regret that up. very much money to hospitals in order to get campaign contributions. But um, listen, but Governor, no, see, that's the that, that's a big lie. They got eight million dollars from me and I was sent to prison for things that aren't left. crimes. They got it after you. I had promised left. that I ordered it before that happened and it didn't. They got it while I was governor. That is not factual. OK, uh, Governor Blagojevich, I do wish you the best. I, I really I'm glad for your family that you're out. And, and I, <laughs> I don't know, I by the way, you were asking me questions. I'm well, no, sorry, honestly, I appreciate you no, having no, me but, on. But just honestly, yes. I, I just, look, I have no problem with you getting out. I think, you know, the president can commute to whoever he wants. I just think I wish, you know, you're besmirching prosecutors who actually, uh, who are no longer in, the, in, in government, but, you know, prosecutors are important in our system and you are going after the very basis of well, our justice system, which has plenty of problems. But, but you know, part of the thing right. is you got out, you do have an obligation to at least admit what you did wrong and you refuse to do that, and you're creating a whole new alternate universe of facts. And that may be big in politics today, but it's still, frankly, just bullshit. We gotta leave it there. Well, Thank no, you, it's Governor. not bullshit. I lived it myself. It's not bullshit at all. Thank you. Why Rod Blagojevich thought it might be a good idea to go on national television is light years beyond me. The guy hit the lottery. He just so happens to be a corrupt criminal politician who got a pardon by a president who loves corrupt criminal politicians. All he had to do was go home, spend time with his family, and thank his lucky stars that Donald Trump is doing his small part to help as many low-life thugs he can find walk free. And yet instead, Blagojevich tried to do an image rehab tour. And I'll tell you what, prison might have been tough, but I can guarantee you that his worst day in jail wasn't half as bad as what Anderson Cooper just did. But this is the Trump effect in action, where people like Blagojevich see how Trump operates, and so they think they can just will into existence an alternate reality. Because lest there be any doubt, Blagojevich is not a victim here, nor is he some noble crusader out to reform the criminal justice system. The guy was convicted of wire fraud and conspiracy charges, including for trying to sell Barack Obama's US Senate seat for a personal profit. He tried to extort a children's hospital by withholding funding until he could extract $50,000 in campaign contributions. And he made false statements to the FBI. He was impeached, the Illinois Senate voted 59 to 0 to convict him, and he was barred from ever holding office in Illinois again, along with a 14 year prison sentence. So I get why he might want to try and clear his name, but attempting to rewrite history is not exactly the way to do it.
And there was a moment in this interview where Blagojevich did manage to show some humility and express regret for not doing enough in the realm of granting clemency while he was governor. He even said that, given all the time he had to think, the regret for not acting did weigh on him. Which is good. But just as he managed to finally take one foot out of his mouth, he shoved the other one in instead. He says he didn't know how corrupt the criminal justice system was until he became a victim of it. Rod Blagojevich, the guy, again, who tried to sell a US Senate seat for a personal profit, saying it's a quote, valuable thing, you don't just give it away for nothing. If there's one quality that actually eclipses his corruption, it's his delusion. And not just with his victimhood complex. I'm not sure who's advising the guy, but you don't get to defend your record of doing zero to help the criminal justice system by invoking, of all things, giving children health care when you were convicted for extorting a children's hospital. Just a free tip, focus on literally anything else. Saying you had potholes filled would have reflected your record better than bringing up children's health care. And beyond that, the whole idea that he couldn't help reform the criminal justice system by granting clemency to the appropriate cases while he was in office because he was too busy doing something else is absurd. Rod Blagojevich was governor from 2003 to 2009, that's six years, and instead he was so disinterested in clemency cases during his time in office that he literally earned himself the nickname Backlog Blagojevich. He took actions on so few petitions that not only was he sued, but it took two successive gubernatorial administrations to clear the backlog that he'd created. It got so bad that state lawmakers, during Blagojevich's tenure, created a workaround process for granting expungement for those who'd been wrongfully imprisoned because the governor's office was so useless. In other words, not only was he ineffective with regard to criminal justice reform, he actually exacerbated its problems. And just as Blagojevich walks around now saying that he's a Trumpocrat, he put why that is on full display. Because he may take it upon himself to shamelessly lie on national television, to give himself credit for a problem he only made worse, to paint himself a hero when he was the villain and a victim when he was the perpetrator, but no one is buying it. And especially not Anderson Cooper.